Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. So far we have understood about timing and congestion optimization in placement and different type of cells such as tap cells, pair cells and tie cells. We also discussed about timing fixes but in today's video we will understand about useful skew concept which is used during optimization. If you have watched one of the previous video then you already have some idea about setup timing or hold timing violations. We have discussed that in our STS series also link of which is given in the description below. And here is a brief overview that a setup timing violation occurs when your arrival time is greater than the required time and arrival time is the data of data path delay. Here this is our data path combinational logic and your TCQ delay that is your data path delay and required time is your total clock path delay. Hence a setup timing calculation specifies how much maximum path a data path can take and we have understood that concept through the waveform also. Here is the list of commonly used setup fixes. This list is just a brief summary and it is not exhaustive list. There can be some other possible fixes too which are not listed here. It is just a generic and most common fixes of tool which tool uses while doing the timing aware placement of the standard cells. If we want to fix the hold then we have to enable hold corner in the placement stage and that we have mentioned in our previous videos also and here is the list of most commonly used methods for the tool to fix the hold. Even if by applying these methods of fixing setup and hold methods sometimes what happens is path will not get fixed and that time we use the technique of useful skew which is generally the last resort and this video is all about that only. And now let us understand the concept of useful skew in this video. Let us take an example where one timing path has a slack of minus 50 PS in setup and path next to it has a slack of plus 100 PS in setup and both flops are driven by same clock source. Now let us assume that the clock latency that you have put in the placement stage is plus 500 picoseconds. So let's say you have your clock source here and each flop clock endpoint will be getting 500 500 picoseconds so here also it will be 500 picoseconds here also it will be 500 picoseconds of clock latency and at this clock end point also it will be 500 picoseconds of clock latency because in this case tool will consider that clock network delay is same for each of the clock end points and in placement stage clock is not built yet so it is ideal and this clock is ideal which means it is not propagated yet and tool will use ideal clock tree for building the clock latency and balance points for all the active scenarios. In this case tool will see that if optimization is not helping and there is a scope of fixing path via clock push or clock pull then tool will do the adjustment for most critical sequential elements in the design. This concept is called useful skew and we will see that how it is done. Currently if you see clock latencies are same everywhere and if you try to calculate skew for any particular timing path let's say you want to calculate time skew for this particular path it will be 0 picoseconds even if you try to calculate skew for this particular path since latencies are same it will again come to 0 picoseconds but let's say if you want to make use of this particular 0 skew which is ideal because clock is ideal so the, in this case what we can do is if you see that this latency is 500 picoseconds what we can do is if we insert a buffer or somehow if we try to create this latency more let's say if we pushed this latency by plus 50 picoseconds if we pushed this latency by 50 picoseconds the total clock latency for this particular capture path will now be 550 picoseconds at that time what will happen is if you try to calculate now there will be extra 50 picoseconds of skew. So new skew will be 50 picoseconds and that will get added in your required time. So your required time will not be low, no longer will be 500 pic, uh, will not be no longer will be equivalent to your clock period. It will be 50 picoseconds plus your clock period. Whatever the clock period is that doesn't matter in this case because it was violating whatever the clock period was it was violating with minus 50 picoseconds earlier now you have extra required time so when you calculate slack earlier your slack was violating in this equation where your required time was minus uh, uh, required time was some value and uh, your slack calculation in this calculation now you will have rt plus 
50 picoseconds minus 80 and this slack earlier was your minus 50 picoseconds so it will ideally start meeting now because of this kind of clock push now that we have increased the latency for this particular flop so new clock latency as we mentioned earlier it is 550 picoseconds and in this particular path this particular path it is your launch flop now this was capture flop for previous timing path but this particular case it is launch for launch flop so you have increased latency here and here now if you try to calculate your skew will be minus 50 picoseconds and because of that what will happen effectively at the end is your slack will reduce by the same amount and it will be plus 100 minus 50 and it will be actually 50 picoseconds so since you had enough margin in this particular path you will still see that timing is met here and you will see that timing is met in your previous path also and that is what the concept of useful skew is nowadays because of increasing complexity it happens very frequently that tool uses this methodology to fix the paths only once you enable it that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and do give your important feedback in the comment section thank you